Welcome back to Pop Radius, everyone. You know, it just blows my mind how Disney seems unwilling to judge the quality of its Star Wars TV shows based on the merits alone. The only focus should be on how well the story is constructed. Peter, it's making me watch. In today's world, Disney and Lucasfilm are very different companies. They will stand behind any and all TV shows and movies they create, regardless of how bad the show's final edit is. Don't hate. It's great. As long as the new show has heavy DEI influence, they will unequivocally stand behind it, swallow their pride, and proclaim the show and commercial success, as millions of diehard fans tell them otherwise. <laughs> and it's here, at this juncture, that Disney and Lucasfilm decide to do what no company would do against its fan base, weaponize the show against them. Imagine if McDonald's put out a new sandwich and the feedback they received was overwhelmingly negative from their customers. Would it be a better idea to pull the sandwich and try and make positive changes based on the opinions they've heard? Or start a media campaign to discredit their customers who told them that the sandwich sucked? If you get negative feedback early on, you make changes, conduct reshoots, rewrite the scripts, or recast any role that you need to. However, with Disney, a new DEI ideology has taken complete control of the process. The quality of the show's production, screenplay, and overall likability have no impact on whether Disney execs will release or stand behind the project as long as diversity, equity, and inclusion are on clear display. And here's the real problem with Disney and Lucasfilm. They no longer care about the actual quality of the content they produce. They decide on the quality of a TV show or movie based on how blatant DEI initiatives are on display. The more prominent, the better the show. The Acolyte has become the most prominent and glaring example of this ideology at work at Disney. The Acolyte is a terrible TV show in every category that you assess it on, and no honest review can ignore the incredibly low level of competence on display. The entire production looks like a sub $20 million CW project, not a $180 million big budget Star Wars TV show by Lucasfilm. Is it that bad? Is it really that bad? Disney and Lucasfilm do the one thing that no other company would think of doing, discrediting their audience, the very customers who disagree with the ideology they now put front and center. Star Wars fans can be as critical as they want. They can voice their opinions about the low quality level of the show, the grade school quality of the scripts, or how the canon is being compromised by directors and producers who seem to have fallen in love with the Star Wars franchise because they just landed a lead role, a director's job, or produce a movie or Star Wars TV project. Go on. A job at Lucasfilm will make fans out of these ideological directors and actors really fast. When it comes to movies and TV shows, the audience are the customers. They are the ones who consume or watch what the studio puts out. This has to be the first time in history that any S&P 500 company has purposefully and knowingly attacked their customers for voicing their opinion. And I'll guarantee you that if an actor in an Apple TV production did the same things that Amanda Stenberg has done to the Disney Star Wars fans, Apple would shut them down, and they would never appear in any future Apple TV production again. People who watch Apple TV are Apple's customers, and it would be hard to see the top brass at Apple ever attack their customers the same way that Disney does. I don't know any other company that would do what Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy have done. It goes against everything that a clear-thinking company would do. And that's the sad truth with the current state of affairs at the Walt Disney Company. It could be that the next Star Wars TV show or movie after the Acolyte is even worse. And if it is, which is hard to fathom, but hey, you know, anything is possible with this company. Disney and Lucasfilm will stand 100% behind the project as long as it was born from their DEI ideology that now governs the content creation at their studios. Quality storytelling. Careful attention to detail in using and growing the lore and canon and basing their decisions on the merit of the production are criteria that Disney Star Wars 
no longer uses to assess the quality of a project. Stupid is, stupid does, sir. The continued destruction of the Star Wars brand will likely continue as long as the ones in power at Disney maintain their adherence to DEI activist ideology when deciding on and assessing their projects. Let's not forget that Daisy Ridley will reprise her role as Rey in a new Star Wars movie exploring the New Jedi Order, which I am 100% okay with. Daisy Ridley has shown unbiased poise in interviews and acts in a way that is respectful to all fans. It's the director, Charmin Abide Shinoi, with whom Star Wars fans will most likely have an issue but with. But you don't play that card. Of course I play the woman card. Oh, you card. do? <laughs> Hell yes! I wanted to hear I that. Mean, you're Asian woman, you've got of to play course. the woman card. She has said that every piece of work that she does is guided by her activism, and everything she does has activism in it. Those words ring with undeniable concern when coupled with the DEI ideology that has usurped the creative power at Disney. I am more than happy to give it a chance, but based on what has happened with Star Wars projects to date, it's not looking good. And that's all I have to say about Disney Star Wars today, and I will see you in our next video. Cheers.